Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be filling the half pans of my new set of Holbein watercolors that I got this Christmas and just kind of relaxing, having a good time and talking while we fill up a new palette, which is always fun. Remember, if you like these sort of videos, if you enjoy art content, if you like art supply hauls, reviews, talk about art supplies and in general, consider subscribing to the channel if you're new here. And remember to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video today. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. I am going to not go in the order that they have here because they did it in a rainbow color order. I much prefer the more standard yellow on yellow to green to earth tone kind of thing color theory order so we're just going to kind of wing it i've also got these extra colors that i picked up in a palette packs box a while back actually i think it's a couple years now goodness i think it's been that long <laughs> and we're going to add those into the palette and we will not be half panning the white today i i might at a future point but i don't really use white watercolor and it would have to sit here in the middle of my palette and I'm going to save that space for maybe some other colors that I might pick up later. So I've done my best to kind of organize my half pans and how they're going to go into the tin. So let's uh, hope for the best. And they're all labeled like I normally do. Uh, I label it with what the color name is, the pigment or pigments in this case, and then on the bottom is what the brand is, um, since I don't need to really see that since I label my tin on top with what brand it is. If I ever need to pop them out for a video or, or I want to switch colors out and there's not enough room in the palette, it, then I can see which brand it is so I can keep better track of it. So that's kind of how I do things. Uh, first up is Permanent, lemon, uh, p permanent Yellow Lemon. So we'll start there with this one here. And this is a mix of PY3 and PY74, so not a traditional PY3. Oh, they open up real nice. That's good. I hate when they kind of explode when you open them. It's usually, I think, to the heat, not necessarily the paint company, but it's still nice nonetheless. Okay, let's get that in there. I'm not going to go too crazy filling them up. I don't mind if they sink down a little bit. There we go. And we've got our first half pan done. Now, Holbein's interesting because it sounds, you would think, oh goodness, my desk is a mess today. You would think with the name like Holbein that this is a German company that makes this, but this is actually a Japanese based watercolor. The next color is Permanent Yellow Light, which is over here in the extra colors. Let's see how these open after all this time. A little tight, but otherwise good. There we go. Um, but it's actually a Japanese company, and the reason it's called Holbein is after, I believe the artist's name is Hans Holbein. Holbein? Ugh, what a mouthful. He was a famous, I think, German Swiss painter? I think he was in the 16th century. Um, he did a lot of portrait work, portrait and I think prints. And he was actually regarded as one of the best portrait artists of his time. I know he did paintings for royalty and stuff like that. Um, so he was pretty interesting of a guy. We got Hansa, no, I'm so used to saying Hansa. We have uh, Permanent Yellow Deep up next. Uh, oh. Permanent yellow light was PY74 and PY83. Hansid, oh, I can't keep saying it. Permanent yellow deep is PY74 and PY83. This reminds me of a Hansa yellow deep though, with the orangey tone to it. So, yeah, the uh, company named themselves after the artist, but it is. A Japanese company, I believe, out of Osaka. 
and they have branches here in uh, North America for both the United States, Canada. Um, they, they can be found throughout Europe. Um, interestingly enough, it's actually kind of difficult to get Holbein sometimes, especially like these small five milliliter tubes. Uh, next color is John, John. G's, John, G's. It sounds like G's, Jean. I think. Okay. I had to someone help me. It sounds like G's, John, so I think that's it. I had someone in the comments actually help me sound that out, which was nice. So thank you for that. Um, this is a very, like, Caucasian white flesh tone. It is PO20 and PY6. Yeah, that's like a flesh tone, which is good because then I've got a good array of flesh tones and browns and I can add tints to yellows and reds and stuff like that. Ooh. That's a very nice color though. But, um, there we go, looking good. Next color is Vermilion Hue. We have that with PO73, PR254, one of my favorites, and PY110, so quite the mix to get this hue color. But, um, that's kind of what Holbein is known for. They're known for premixes in their colors, so you don't want to mix them too much or you can get a little bit muddy. At least I think that's true. I'm definitely going to try and mix some anyway just to see if that is true and how well it works out for me. But um, yeah, it's actually really hard to come across the five milliliter tubes here in uh, at least the United States. I don't, I can't speak for Canada. Um, I know Jackson's Art Supply over in, uh, in uh, Europe, over there, in England, I believe it is. They have the half pans, but they cannot distribute to North America, the United States with them. So, that sucks. Next up is Rose Matter. Kind of working our way up. Um, we have PR83. But so far, these colors have been quite lovely. I've got quite the array of yellows here. Not quite an orange orange. I'd have to mix a true orange, I think. Oh, that's deep. That is a deep, deep red. I'd be curious to see what that looks like diluted. I actually haven't taken a look at any of the color charts other people have like online or anything then I'm, I'm kind of going in blind here so I hope I have them in the sort of right order that I like um Crimson Lake which this one got smushed I touched it with the wet ink on the uh, label so it's all kind of smushied let's see is it, is it gonna yeah you can kind of see I smushed it a little bit oops <laughs> But I was too lazy to relabel it, so it'll be fine. I can still read it. But I still got humorous out of that. Uh, another very deep red. I think more of like a purpley tinge to it. Speaking of, it is made of PR-177, PR-122, and PV-19. So that's getting that kind of violet purple tone which is why I put it over here but we'll see how those play out uh, next we're adding in the opera quinacridone opera which is BB 10 PR 122 I love these bright pink colors usually they're not light fast um, most of the time, anything with opera, rose opera, opera pink, quinacridone opera, whatever you want to call it, usually is not light fast. Um, I know that the light fastness rating is on here somewhere. But 
but I can't remember how to tell. It's a series B, I don't know what that means. But that's okay, I will look up that. I think it's actually, now that I think about it, I'll check at the end of the video. I have the little paper in here on the underside of this, so I will check then. Next color is Mineral Violet. I was debating whether to put this by the purples or if I was going to put it with the earth tones, and inevitably I decided to put them in the purple slot because um, this does have a very dark tone to it. But we'll see if I end up moving this one. I, I might put it with the earth tones like how it is in the uh, the box. But I'm actually really curious to see this color because I'm not usually one that uses kind of purples like this. I usually use um, Carbozal. Car Did I'm just, am I saying that? Carbozal Violet? I'm probably saying it wrong because I don't have it in front of me, but um, purples like that are usually my go-to. This one is a mix of PB29, PR122, and PBR25. That's how you're getting that mineral color from that uh, brown pigment. So we'll see how that swatches out later and see if I need to move that around in the palette. Next up is Prussian Blue, so we're starting down here and then we're going to go up through the greens. Prussian Blue is a secret favorite of mine. It was one of the blues that Bob Ross used to use on his palette. So of course if he used it, I wanted to use it. It's a lovely color. I think, if I'm not mistaken, this is a pure pigment of Holbein's. This is PB27. So that's a pure pigment, so that's very nice. Next up is Ultramarine Deep. And that should be PB, what, 29, I believe, is ultramarine. I always get it in, P I think it's PB 15 for the phthalo. I always get them a little mixed up sometimes. It is PB 29, yes. Okay. right there. Next up is Cobalt Blue Hue. That is this one here. And we've got PB29 and PB15. So this is a mix of the two blues together. And like I said, this set has a lot of blues and greens. So I definitely want to do, I think I, think I want to do a seascape. That seems like it would be a good use, like a nice tropical one where it's got like a lot of green to it in the water. I think that would look really lovely for these watercolors. Okay, next up is Cerulean Blue. That is this one here. And for this one, this is PB35. This is not one I'm uh, familiar with or very used very often. And so far, all these paints have opened beautifully. None of them have exploded. But like I said, I think that's usually due to heat. Um, and since we're in January and it's cold right now, um, it's actually not that cold here in Texas. It's uh, It's been weird. It has definitely been weird on the uh, temperature. It was cold for Christmas, and then it like jumped up into the 70s again. It was really weird, but you kind of get used to it here. Our weather is all over the place. But uh, yeah, I said that was PB35. So we'll talk of that one right there. We'll start on row two with Peacock Blue. This is the last of the extra tubes. This is... PG7 and PB15. So I believe this is a mix of phthalo pigments. And 
There we go. Come on, fill up. I'm not sure if I want to move this one on like the tube. It looked like I think I want to move these two. I think I like that better. Let's go with that for now. Uh, next up is Compose Blue, and that is PB15 and PW6. So we're getting some white in there to up its opacity and lighten it up. Yeah, it's a pretty color. But uh, yeah, Holbein uh, definitely confused me the first time I heard about it because I was like, this is a German company. It has to be a German company. And it's like, no, no, it's Japanese. They are just paying homage to... Eh, I got paint on me. I can't help it. I always get paint on me. Every time I do this, it, it has to be a thing. <laughs> uh, next up is Cobalt Green. So we'll be popping over here now. But yeah, I was convinced this was a German company and like, I was like, no, it's it's Japanese paying homage to him, which is actually really cool. I can appreciate that. Cobalt Green is PG-18, PB-28, and PW-6. Um, I actually am excited to try more Japanese colors and art supplies and other things like that. Even though they're a little bit hard to get sometimes. It's usually well worth it. They make an excellent quality product. And sometimes it's just fun to kind of get things outside of your area. It's like, I love my Daniel Smith. I love my M. Graham, Da Vinci, all those kind of things. They're, they're super awesome. But sometimes it's fun just to kind of see what people get elsewhere. So that's fun. Uh, next up is Viridian Hue. I might mix this one around too the greens a little bit we'll see but that cobalt green is beautiful that that's kind of like that turquoisey kind of tropical water feel that uh that I want to go with with the painting one of the things that I do want from Holbein that I want to try on a grander scale is their colored pencils but they are ridiculously hard to come by or are ridiculously expensive, one or the other. Viridian Hue is PG-7. So that's pure. Then we got Terra Vert. Yeah, come here, you. Which is PG-23 and PG-17 mixed together. But I've had the privilege, shall we say, the honor, the, the ability to test Holbein color pencils with a few from palette packs in the past and I'd like to do like a full grand piece on it but I only have like pastel colors um to work with so I'm not sure truly how they work you know I'll slide you down a little bit because these 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 greens are probably going to move around I have a feeling uh, this is permanent green number two. We have permanent green number one right here. PY74, PY53, and PG7. We're getting a lot of the PG7, which I th think is a phthalo pigment. I might be wrong on that. I think I'm wrong on that. Yeah, we're probably going to move these around a little bit. I don't know. I'm not sure. Quite yet. There we go. Oh, I have this one backwards. I have them all facing me with what the color is called, not the pigment. So let's fix that real quick. Oh, I could have put a lot more in that one. Oh well. <laughs> That's the beauty of hand pouring. They're all going to come out different. Speaking of hand poured, hand, like handmade uh, watercolors, um, I think. I think one of the next watercolor brands I'm going to look for, since I have quite the collection already, so it might be a while, I think a Gallo. I think that's how it's pronounced. Gallo, not Gallia, Galli. 
Gallo? Yeah. I'm going with that. Uh, I've heard a lot of wonderful things about them and their watercolors. And I would actually like to try some more smaller, like a small handmade watercolor brand. Um, if not that, there is a brand, I believe it's in Canada. Don't quote me on that. I might be wrong. Uh, Stone Ground Paint Company, I think it's called. They also do small batch um, watercolors. Yeah, I think we're going to move this one over here. Try not to get paint on me. There we go. And I think we'll do it like that. Because that's that terra burnt is a little bit more earthy tone, which is what we're going to be leaning into next with yellow ochre. So, yeah, that that's another thing I want to try. It's probably some more like smaller, individually owned watercolor brands. I think that would be fun to try out. This is PY42. If we're talking major brands or like bigger brands or like ones people know, um, I actually need to at some point get Windsor and Newton. I do not have Windsor and Newton watercolors. That's funny. I went to uh, Hobby Lobby yesterday. And they were having clearance on art supplies, which they do quite frequently because they're, they're, they're honestly trying to get rid of a lot of other brands other than their house brand, which I don't care for. Uh, this is Yellow Gray, PY42, PBK6, and PW6. So an interesting mix for sure. Um, I'd be, um, I'm interested to try it out because it's very different. And something I would normally use, and it's very, it's a little more liquidy than the others. But anyway, Hobby Lobby. Um, so whenever they do the sales, I try to look, or the clearance sales, I should say, to see if they're getting rid of any brands that I like. Actually, they were, and I missed it because it's like I went to Hobby Lobby, like maybe like a week ago, uh, to pick up something for work uh, for my husband. And I looked around, there was no sales. And then, like, I went this week, so like a week later, and then everything's on clearance. Copic markers. Uh, we're doing light red next, which is PR 101. Um, Copic markers were on clearance for $1.99, but they were basically sold out of the markers. I couldn't believe it. I was like, I, in a week, they were all gone. And I'm like, that would have been amazing. So I went checking uh, their watercolor section because the only other brand other than their house brand watercolor that they still carry, um, I think is Windsor & Newton, maybe like one other that I don't even remember what the brand is because it's that small. If they even still have it, they might not anymore. <laughs> um, I wanted to see maybe if they put them on clearance because that, that'd be a great time to grab a set of those. So we have Burnt Sienna. This is PBR7, so is Burnt Umber. The next one is PBR7 as well. But yeah, alas, they did not have a sale. So I'm probably going to keep an eye out for a sale somewhere for Windsor and Newton for like my next big uh, watercolor grab which I'm, I'm not sure when that's going to be exactly that might be a little bit I did just get a bunch of new watercolors with the, the da Vinci for Black Friday and Holbein here for Christmas so I have kind of a backlog of paints that I want to do paintings of and test out which will be coming soon especially now that I have the wonderful new setup here which is way easier to work with um, I do miss the convenience of having the webcam up and the webcam stays permanently up there. The camera has to come down every time because I can't access the memory card, uh, without taking it down. So 
I have to get it up there every time I want to do a video, which I'm getting used to, but I, I do miss the simplicity of the webcam just being hooked up and recording like that. But the overall image quality is way better um, now, so it's well worth the trade-off. <laughs> but uh, other than watercolor, though, I wouldn't mind trying some new oil paint brands, honestly. So that's something might come up soon. I, I've, I've got three, but that might be something coming soon. Um, there's some I've had my eye on. This is Ivory Black. And it is PVK9. That is our last half band since I'm not doing the white, which is PW6 if you were curious for Chinese white. Um, I have Windsor & Newton. I have... Wow, why am I drawing a Gamblin? And M. Graham. I was like, wow, I'm drawing a blank. It's been a minute since I've actually done an oil painting. I did one back in the uh, late fall. Um, and I was going to do some during, like, December, but then I wasn't feeling well, and then the holiday break, it's hard for me to do oil painting with uh, my daughter home from break, so that was, like, almost three weeks of that. So, yeah. Um, January here is shaping up nice. I've done some watercolor paintings, and uh, I'm looking to do possibly an oil painting as soon as next week, actually, so that's pretty cool. But, uh, this, I think, tells me, okay, capacity, series code, permanency rating is number five. Oh, it's got stars. Okay, I see what it is there. And this is a one star, so I'm assuming that's not good. Yeah, that has three... This one has two, so I'm guessing one is terrible permanency rating, a light fastness, and that's, uh, like I said, anything opera, quinacridone opera, rose opera, anything with opera in the name is typically not very light fast. So let's slide this off to the side, and let's bring in the watercolor tin. Let's get those off to the side, and I like to do the order because normally when I paint, my tin is to the left of me. So this mixing area is, is facing this way. And then I have my brush, water over here, and then the artwork here in the center. So what I like to do personally is put my yellows over here. And that's just kind of how I do each palette, or at least I try to remember to do it, and then if I don't, I end up fixing it later. So I wanted to make sure I did it right this time, because this is a lot of half pans that I don't want to have to re-pull, remove around and stuff like that. That one flattened out really nice. That one's going to be a really pretty half pan. But let's see, we've observing the colors a little bit closer. Um... The yellows go in a good order. We've got a nice, bright, kind of neutral, lightly green-tinged yellow. We've got two warm yellows with kind of like a mid-tone and then a more traditional, like, Hansi Yellow Deep. We've got that weird orange uh, color there for, like, Caucasian white flesh tone. We have Vermilion Hue for a nice warm red. Um, I'm not sure how I want to do these two. I think I want the Crimson Lake to be second because it has the uh, violet pigment in it. So I think we'll keep it the way I had it. Which I could have filled that one up a little bit more. Um, we're going to keep the Opera next. Uh, for now, I'll leave the Mineral Violet here until I test it further. They're like on top of each other. There we go. Uh, we'll do Prussian blue next. I may move the Prussian blue um, and swap it with the ultramarine deep. Maybe, we'll see. Uh, I am curious. Okay, I'm not quite sure how much 
footage we lost there, but I have finished the first row. Um, so all those colors are kind of like how I like them. And then we go over here to this side and we kind of work backwards with the blue being over here. And we're going to actually do it where I put the ivory black in next and then we'll work from there. So yeah, forgive me. I'm not sure how much footage I lost. I'm not used to recording on a camera just yet. Um, they do have a 30 minute limit. And to be honest, I didn't think this was going to take that long to do, but I should have with the amount of colors here. <laughs> so oops, learning experience. I'm um, not sure, I want to do the Viridian, but I'm not sure how I want to do these greens. You know, let's do this one first. Little, little, little weird. I might change my mind later, but let's do it that way because this kind of starts. Oh. I'm a genius. I kind of like that. Okay, we're going to stick with that for now. Um, but yeah, I'm not I'm a usually user error there. I'm not quite used to that, and honestly, I didn't expect it to be that long of a video because usually when I do half pan videos, they're relatively short. Um, I do have a little timer that I can set for 30 minutes. That way I know when it's going to end because it'll go off and then I'll be like, oh, okay, time to restart the camera. Um, I just, I didn't think this one was going to go long enough. So hopefully we didn't lose too much. Oh, this last half pan bites you. And it's like, I don't want to get too much paint on me. Got it. Nailed it. I'm great. I'm amazing. <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway. Looking at all the colors together in the uh, tray here in the, in the tin, it almost reminds me of like student grade store brands kind of watercolors where they, they, they're a little bit more vibrant and bright and um, I don't like those watercolors because they look, I don't want to call these, these are not chalky, but like the chalky ones, you know, and the ones I'm talking about, um, that are not even, I wouldn't even call those student grade, honestly. Um, I would call them beginner children grade, but anyway, Holbein only makes professional quality. So these is professional quality, um, paints. Uh, they only do that. They don't do student quality. But uh, there we go. There we have it. It looks beautiful. Lots of bright colors. I'm excited to get into this palette. Like I said, I have the Da Vinci palette I still need to use and some other stuff I still want to do as well. I think M. Graham needs a video as well. Um, next up, we'll probably be swatching this out because I want to see some of these colors in action. And then I think we'll go on to actually doing some paintings with some of these new watercolors. So I guess that about wraps things up for now. We've got lots coming in the future. <laughs>